Thank you for tuning in to Inside Taiwan. I'm Melvin Tim. While receiving a delegation from the European Parliament's Taiwan Friendship Group on Monday, President Ma Ying-jeou called on the delegates to support Taiwan's efforts to rectify its name in the World Health Organization. Internal WHO documents that were recently leaked caused a stir because they referred to Taiwan as a province of China. Yin 台湾 only recently discovered that World Health Organization Director General Margaret Chan asked internal WHO departments last September to refer to Taiwan as Taiwan China. During his meeting with a delegation from the European Parliament's Taiwan Friendship Group, President Ma Ying-jeou noted that both he himself and Health Minister Chou Wen-da, who is currently attending a WHA conference, have formally lodged protests with the WHO over the issue. The 12-year mandatory education policy is to be implemented in 2014, where counties and cities across the country will widen the scope of exam-free admissions. But the joint exam-free admission policy in Jilong, Taipei and New Taipei City seems to have confused many parents and students. Given so, the three cities have reached an initial agreement that is to cancel the individual exam-free admission policy and keep the joint one running starting next school year. For ninth graders in Taipei, New Taipei, and Keelung City, if they wish to get an early admission to high school and vocational high schools, they can first take part in the exam-free admission program and then attend the joint one. But given the varied deadlines and ways to calculate the grades, many students and parents find it really confusing and complicated. Therefore, educational authorities in the three cities decide to cancel their individual test-free admission next year, leaving only the joint one running. To work with the Ministry of Education's policy to screen applicants with their GPA, high schools will simplify the application process. As a matter of fact, the joint test-free admission program offers nearly 18,000 slots this year, but as high as 9,800 slots in private high school and vocational high schools are not filled. Therefore, the Education Bureau of New Taipei City says it will have a final decision before the end of July on details such as the minimum admission requirement and other related matters. Sanyang's Zhongxiao East building underwent a court auction, selling for a total of $4.1 billion. Real estate experts said the high price was due to optimism about urban properties on behalf of the winning bidder, who ultimately purchased the 345.8 pings of high-end real estate at a court record price for strong funds in the court sponsor auction. The Sanyang building on Taipei's Zhongxiao East Road is located on prime real estate next to the Zhongxiao Donghua MRT station. It was the first court auction property undertaken by the Taipei District Prosecutor's Office. The base floor area occupies 345.8 pings and sold for a price of 4.1 billion NT dollars, which sold for 7.28 million NT dollars per ping, which is a record for a first floor storefront. The high bid means that the winning bidder is optimistic about the future value of urban renewal. The 12-story Sanyang Zhongxiao building was divided into A and B plot. The A plot included the first to third floor, had a base price of 860 million NT dollars. In the end, Fubom Life Insurance paid a total of 2.01 billion NT dollar for it, with the B plot including floors 4 through 14, not including floors 6 and 7, with a base price of 1.36 billion NT dollars as it eventually sold for 2.13 billion NT. Although the court sale of the Sanyang Zhongxiao building set a record, some scholars believe that commercial and residential property are very different. This is because commercial tenants tend to be long-term. Investors frequently speculate in residential properties, as this sale may not influence nearby residential prices. Scholars believe that following the luxury tax this year, there will be some impact on the housing market, as the market is still optimistic, though many say there is still a need to wait and see after the tax takes effect on June 1st. 
As part of the Republic of China's centennial celebrations, the Council for Cultural Affairs will be honoring a group of foreigners for their contributions to the ROC. The honorees include Italy native father Giancarlo Michelini, who founded the Lanyang Dance Troupe, and Argentina native father Ricardo Ferreira, who has worked tirelessly to educate disadvantaged children in Yunlin's Beigang and Jingmen. Father Giancarlo Michelini arrived in Taiwan from Italy in 1964 and has now lived in Ilan for nearly half a century. He founded Ilan's renowned Lanyang Dance Troupe and has also played a significant role in the annual Ilan International Children's Folklore and Folk Game Festival. Father Michelini believes that Taiwan must rely on culture to expand its place in the international community. According to Council for Cultural Affairs statistics, more than 1,000 and 500 foreigners have resided in Taiwan for more than 30 years. The late father Ricardo Ferreira arrived in Taiwan from Argentina at the age of 28 and spent his life tirelessly working on behalf of disadvantaged children in Beigang and Jingmen. To honor Father Ferreira, residents of the two areas have set up an educational center and scholarship program for disadvantaged youths in Argentina. As part of the Republic of China centennial celebrations, the Council Council for Cultural Affairs will be honoring a group of foreigners for their contributions to the ROC with a tree of thanksgiving at Huashan Creative Park. In Miaoli Township of Yunlin County, a resident Zhang was diagnosed with having ovarian cancer five days before tying the knot with her Japanese boyfriend, whom she has dated for eight years. Worried over the possible infertility after the treatment, she decided to break up with him. But her Japanese boyfriend didn't give up on the relationship and stayed with her through the cancer treatment journey. Fortunately, she successfully recovered from the illness and is recently pregnant with their first child. With a big smile on her face, Jiang Jialing, a resident of Mailiao Township of Yunlin County, was diagnosed of having ovarian cancer five days before getting married with a Japanese boyfriend, whom she has dated for eight years. Worried over the infertility issue, she decided to break up with her husband-to-be. However, the Japanese man refused to give up on their relationship and help her through the tough battle against cancer. According to Jiang, only days before their wedding, she was found to have a 10-centimeter ovarian tumor. Though her husband doesn't speak Chinese, he stayed on her side to go through the most difficult three months in the National Taiwan University Hospital. Fortunately, the cancer cells haven't spread to another side of her ovary. She has successfully gotten pregnant after the chemo treatment. The hospital says that the doctors only operated on one side of her ovary since Ms. Jiang hasn't given birth, so she's able to have babies. But their stories of fighting cancer is even more touching, and now the couple is happily welcoming a new life in their lives.